Welcome back. So I thought today it would be really useful to do a quick review of some basic calculus, starting with the derivative. So we're going to be building up to differential equations, uh, how systems change in time. And so understanding the derivative is a really key piece of that. OK, um, and most of us have seen the derivative before. We've learned about this in calculus class. So I'm just going to give a quick refresher here, where we have some function uh, f of some independent variable x. So we're going to say that we have uh, an independent variable x on the x-axis, and then we have some function f of x on the y-axis. Maybe I will uh, draw this as just some curve. And we are going to define the derivative as the rate of change of this function, f of x, kind of how much this function changes in this direction as I vary the x direction. Okay, so I'm going to write this down, then we're going to draw a picture, then I'm going to write out the math. So you're going to get words, picture, math. Okay, so the derivative is the rate of change, the rate of change of our function, of a function uh, f of x with respect, and I'll tell you what all these words mean, with respect, respect, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, to an independent variable, independent variable x. Okay, good. So what this means is literally how much f changes when I change x a little bit. So if I move x a little bit to the right, does f go up or down? And does it go up or down by a lot or a little? Okay, pretty simple idea. Now, why we would care about this rate of change of our function f with respect to, to some variable x that it depends on? Well, because of physics, uh, for one. Usually, this kind of is introduced in the context of physics, where maybe you have something like you know, a cannonball being shot out of a cannon, and you want to understand, for example, what is the rate of vertical climb as uh, the cannonball moves in the horizontal direction x. In that case, f of x would be kind of its vertical position position as a function of its horizontal position x. So that's one example where you'd want to compute the rate of change or the rate of climb of this uh, ballistic cannonball as a function of x. Um, I'll come back to some other examples uh, in a little bit. And so the derivative is the rate of change, or how fast this function f of x changes when we vary or change the independent variable x, the, the, the variable that f depends on. So f is a function that depends on x. And so the way we draw this as a picture, so this is in words, rate of change. Uh, the picture of this is that at some position, let's call this, you know, this is some x position, then this derivative is essentially going to be the slope of the tangent line to this function at that point x. So I'll try to draw this. Let's see if I can do a reasonable job here. Okay, so that's a line that is tangent, that's kind of locally in the same direction uh, as my function f at that exact point x. And the slope of that line, literally kind of how much that line goes up for every amount it goes over, the, sometimes this is called in, in a, you know, calculus class the rise over the run, the, the delta f given a delta x, a little change in f given a change in x. Those are all ways you've heard this. And that, of course, is the slope. That's the definition of the slope of this tangent line. It's how much it goes up for every bit it goes over. How much f of x changes for every little change in x. Okay, so these words mean the same thing as this picture. Now, what you can do practically speaking uh, is one way that we might approximate this derivative uh, of this function or the rate of change of f versus x is we might take two points that are kind of nearby, so x and then maybe x plus a little teeny delta x. And in math classes, in my class, usually when you see a little delta, that means a small, a small perturbation. So x plus delta x just means x plus a little bit you know, to the right or to the left. Okay, so I take my point x and my point x a little bit to the right. Let's just write that here. This is f of, this is f of x plus delta x. This point here, maybe make this in pink, is going to be f of x. And so you can at least approximate the derivative by the slope of the line that connects these two points, uh, f at x and f at x plus delta x. So I'll draw that line here. Let's Hope I can do this uh, not too badly. OK, that's not too bad. And you can see that my, my yellow line here that is kind of an approximation is not terrible. And also, as I make 
this delta x smaller and smaller. As I bring these two points together, this will get closer and closer and closer to that true uh, tangent line in pink. Okay, so the slope of this yellow line, this approximate, uh, this approximate tangent line here, is an approximation of my derivative. So what I'm going to write down is I'm going to write down that the derivative, the you know, derivative of my function f with respect to x, that's literally what these symbols mean, is the rate of change of f with respect to x. As I vary x, how much does f change? That's going to be approximately equal to the slope of this yellow line which if I go back to my kind of high school algebra, the slope of this yellow line is going to be how much f varies, which is f of x plus delta x minus f of x uh, and divided by, so that, that's the rise, that's how much f changed, and we divide that by how much x changed, divided by an x here changed by delta x. So all of this divided by delta x. That is the slope of this, uh, this yellow line here. And like I said before, as I make delta x smaller and smaller and smaller, so I bring these points closer and closer and closer together, this, this approximate tangent line gets closer and closer and closer to that true pink uh, tangent line, that is the slope of which is the actual exact derivative. So not the approximate derivative, but the exact derivative is the slope of this pink line, the tangent line exactly at that point x. And my approximation gets better and better and better as this delta x goes to zero, as it gets smaller and smaller and these points get closer and closer. You can see this line kind of converging. And we'll eventually do this on a computer and I'll show you how this gets closer and closer. So this is the key innovation that Newton and Leibniz introduced and they changed the world ever since, it blew everyone's mind at the time, is that we can take the limit as delta x goes to zero, we can actually compute, we can calculate what this limit is and get a, a function out, some, some expression. And now this is no longer approximate, this is exact. Now we have the exact expression for the derivative, df dx, the rate of change of f with respect to x, is the limit of this expression as I take delta x to zero. As I, as I limit this line, as I limit these two points to be closer and closer and closer, I slide this yellow point towards this, this pink point, then my approximation gets better and better and better until I get the exact derivative. And so that's the definition of the derivative. This is the mathematical definition of the derivative. Okay, is this limit as delta x goes to zero of f of x plus delta x, f at a neighboring point at some, you know, x plus a little delta x, minus f at x divided by delta x. Okay, now in this class on, you know, differential equations and how to model the world with, you know, uh, with, with differential equations, I'm actually going to show you a lot of computational techniques, how you actually compute these things, you know, you know on your computer, how you approximate derivatives and, and uh, the rates of change of systems. And in that case, often, we're going to drop this limit. We're going to actually use a finite delta x to approximate our derivatives. And so we are going to accrue a little bit of error. We're going to accumulate a little bit of error every time we don't take this limit as delta x goes to zero. But a ton of computational schemes uh, for numerical integration and numerical differentiation are essentially built on this formula where you just drop this assumption of taking uh, the limit as, as delta x goes to zero. Okay, So we'll do a lot of that uh, later on when we you know, approximate derivatives numerically. And you might think, well, okay, I could probably have done a better job of getting a slope of this yellow line, maybe by taking one point to the right of x and one point to the left of x and finding the slope between those two, uh, those two points. That's absolutely possible. It won't give you any different answer when you take the limit as delta x goes to zero. This is exactly true when you take the limit as delta x goes to zero. But for a finite non-zero delta x, there are more accurate ways of appro approximating this pink line. So for example, instead of just at point f of x and x plus delta x, I could try f of x plus delta x and f of x minus delta x, and maybe that's gonna give me a better approximation. In fact, we will show in a few weeks that that is you know, provably more accurate for some functions. Okay, so uh, this is the derivative uh, in words, in a geometric picture, and in math. So now let's uh, just do some examples. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll compute the derivative of some functions. I'll show you uh, the power law and the chain rule which are two of the absolute most important uh, kind of outfalls of the derivative. They're the two um, most useful kind of uh, 
tricks that we use to compute the derivatives of most functions. And then in a future lecture, we're going to go all the way into the Taylor series. So we're going to approximate functions using uh, higher and higher order derivatives, this Taylor series expansion, which is again kind of built on this basic idea here. Okay, uh, and I'll point out, you know, a lot of my uh, emphasis in this, uh, well, in the class that probably brought you here, is thinking about differential equations. So something like, you know, I have some state of a system x, and I'm going to take its derivative with respect to time, and maybe that's some function of x. So this differential equation, I need to be able to approximate this derivative uh, and understand it. So in this case, uh, x would be my function and x varies in t. So x would be my function, t would be my independent variable. Um, in that case, that's what I mean by the, the derivative of x with respect to t. So um, I might take the derivative of f of x with respect to x. I might take the derivative of x of t with respect to t. And I want you to be uh, comfortable that I can, you know, if I have some function that varies with some other variable, I can take the derivative of that function with respect to that variable. So here x might be the position uh, with respect to time. And if I take the derivative of that position with respect to time, that would be physically the velocity. Okay, and so I can, I can take that derivative as well. Good. Okay, uh, so how about we do an example? Let's say, um, let's just start off easy. Let's do something like uh, x squared. Okay, so we're going to do uh, the derivative of x squared. That's my function. Um, so let, let, let me write this out explicitly. f of x equals x squared. Okay, and so the derivative of f with respect to x, the derivative of f with respect to x, we know, you know, like most of you just remember that the derivative of x squared is 2x, okay? So I'm going to use this formula and show that what we get is 2x. Okay, so df dx, we know that this is equal to the limit as delta x goes to 0 of my function at x plus delta x, so that is literally x plus delta x squared, minus my function evaluated at x, that's literally just x squared, divided by delta x. So this is a pretty easy example. All I have to do is expand this out, you know, x plus delta x squared minus x squared divided by delta x and then take the limit. Um, so this is like our warm up problem. Uh, okay, so x plus delta x squared is x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared, that's this, minus x squared that whole thing divided by delta x. Okay, so now uh, I'm gonna switch colors just to keep it interesting. And now the limit uh, as delta x goes to zero. Okay, so my x squareds cancel, and I'm left with two x delta x. I'm just gonna say that's divided by delta x, plus delta x squared divided by delta x. Okay, this is pretty easy. So again, uh, these delta x's cancel, these delta x's cancel, and this becomes just delta x. And so now I finally have the limit as delta x goes to 0 of 2x plus delta x. And of course, as delta x goes to 0, delta x goes to 0, and so this just equals 2 x. So it's really easy to just kind of confirm your intuition that the derivative of x squared is 2x by actually just plugging in this function into this expression and going through the math. Okay, pretty, pretty simple. And so we're going to do this exact same idea, but now instead of f of x equals x squared, we're going to do x to the nth power, and we're going to derive the, uh, the power law for how to take the derivative of an, you know, an arbitrary nth order power of x. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. Sometimes I fast forward when I'm erasing. Okay, that wasn't too bad. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of an arbitrary function, f of x equals x to the nth power. n is an integer like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I guess it doesn't even have to be an integer. It could be, well, let's assume it's an integer for now. Uh, and we're going to do the exact same thing, just work through. So again, we know, uh, like we know, we have inside knowledge from our you know, calculus class that we probably took, but we might not remember, that uh, df dx equals n times x to the n minus 1. This is the rule that we're going to try to derive right now. And this is a super important point. Um, I always like to kind of point out to my students, you know, I took calculus ages ago, and I've forgotten probably more than I remember. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, you know, I learned a ton of calculus. I loved calculus. And, you know, when you don't use it, you forget it. 
And so there's a ton of stuff I forgot, but almost all of calculus is very intuitive and it's based on first principles. You know, the, the, the first principles of trying to understand how things change with respect to other things. And so what I really want to impart on you is not just formulas to remember, but what are the absolute first principles that if you remember those, you can derive all the formulas again when you forget them. Okay, so maybe you don't remember the power law or the chain rule. Of course, you can derive those from this basic first principles. So that's kind of why I'm showing you this is, is first off just to get practice doing it, but also to remind you that you can kind of uh, derive all of this from scratch. Okay, so now we're just gonna do this uh, derivative, same thing, we're gonna say that um, df dx, equals, we know that this is the limit. Um, I'm gonna drop my limit until the very end because it drives me crazy writing limit, limit, limit every time. So we're just gonna say, we know that we're gonna take the limit as delta x goes to zero, but for now I'm just gonna say this is approximately equal to uh, f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. And so I'm gonna literally plug in x plus delta x to x to the power n. So this is x plus delta x to the power n minus x to the power n divided by delta x. And uh, when I'm giving this class live, I always ask my students, you know, how do I compute x plus delta x to the power n? Does anyone remember? And you might remember uh, that Blaise Pascal, coolest name ever, Blaise, uh, you know, wrote down this, um, what is it called, Pascal's triangle for the binomial expansion for a plus b to the power n, and kind of what all the coefficients of those terms are. So you can kind of just go Google, you know, Pascal's triangle for binomial expansion, and you'll find that x plus delta x to the power n actually has a really simple expression. It's uh, x to the power n plus n x to the power n minus one times a delta x plus n times n minus one over two x to the power n minus two delta x squared plus dot 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 dot. Um, you know, eventually I'm gonna get a delta x to the power n, something like that. Okay, this is this whole expression here, I'm just gonna put this in parentheses. This is my x plus delta x to the power n. Okay, you can just refresh yourself on you know, Pascal's triangle for this expansion. So we're gonna take this minus x to the power n, all of that divided by delta x. And you can already see what's going to happen, I think, is that, you know, these really high power delta x to the n divided by delta x, when I take the limit as delta x goes to zero, you know, this is going to be delta x to the n minus one, that delta x to the n minus one is going to go to zero. So anything with a delta x left over after I divide by delta x is going to go to zero when I take the limit. So only like one of these terms is going to, is going to pop out, probably this term <laughs> that I see right there. Okay, so we're gonna cancel our x to the n's. Uh, I'm gonna divide my delta x through all of these terms just to make my life easier. This is gonna equal now n x to the n minus one, I divide that delta x through, plus uh, n n minus one over two x to the n minus two. Delta x squared over delta x is just delta x, plus, and I'm just gonna say dot, 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 order delta x squared. This order delta x squared means every term to the right that I'm not writing down because I'm lazy has power delta x squared or higher. So here I canceled out my delta x and I got a delta x, you know, delta x squared over delta x. I had one delta x remaining. The next term is a delta x cubed over delta x. That would be a delta x squared remaining. Then delta x to the fourth over delta x is a delta x cubed remaining. So all of the terms I'm too lazy to write down have at least delta x squared or higher. So now here is where I'm going to say, okay, now if I take the limit as delta x goes to zero of this whole expression, all of this expression, the only term that doesn't have a delta x, anything with multiplying a delta x is gonna go to zero here. The only term that doesn't have a delta x is this first term here. All of these other terms go to zero. So the only thing left after I take my limit is and as I make my delta x teeny tiny, as I limit this point to this point, and I get the actual exact derivative, the only term left is n times x to the power n minus one, which is exactly what we thought we would get, and this is called the power law. Literally, what is the derivative of a power of x? Okay, good. So just rehashing what you already know and showing that it's really easy to go from first principles to this very powerful general expression. So now you can take the derivative of any polynomial in x.
Good. You could do this for sine of x, for cosine of x, for e to the x, for log of x. You could plug those into this formula, go back through you know, some of those tricks that you remember from algebra and trigonometry, and you could derive the derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of cosine is minus sine, and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and things like that. Okay, derivative of uh, log of x is 1 over x. You can do all of those things uh, using this simple property from first principles. Okay, last thing I'm going to show you is even more important than the power law. It is the chain rule, probably the most important thing. Uh, I'm going to erase this and then do that. Okay, uh, the chain rule is probably the most useful, uh, besides the actual definition of the derivative, probably the most useful piece that we'll use over and over and over again. So I'm just going to write it down, the chain rule. And the chain rule allows us to take the derivative of these kind of big composite functions, where some function f of another function g. I'll write this down. So um, if we have, uh, let's say we have two functions, two functions, uh, f of x and g of x, then we can take the derivative d d d d x of f of g of x. I literally, you know, if I have some point x, I run it through g, and whatever that number is, I run that through f. That's what f of g of x means. And the derivative of f of g of x, I'll give you an example in a minute. This is going to be the derivative of f with respect to x. That, this derivative, so if it was, you know, x squared, this would be 2x. So that function of g of x times the derivative of g with respect to x, okay, evaluated at x. So this is a very, very, very useful formula because, you know, I know how to take the derivatives of polynomials now. I can probably remind myself how to take the derivative of trigonometric functions, sines and cosines and tangents and things like that. But what if I want to take the derivative of sine of x cubed or, x, you, know, you know, sine of x quantity cubed? I would have to use this chain rule. And so this expresses a much broader class of functions that are kind of, you know, one function of another function. In shorthand, sometimes we write this as, you know, f prime of g of x times g prime of x, where here prime just means, you know, literally f prime of x is defined as df dx, that function, the derivative of my function f with respect to x, and that function is going to be evaluated at that point x. So it's literally the slope of f uh, at that point x. That's just what f prime of x means, that's the derivative. And so the chain rule, the derivative of f of g of x is the derivative of f evaluated at g of x times the derivative of g evaluated at x. And you can derive this in the exact same way using first principles, using this definition. In fact, I think that's a really good exercise is to like take this, plug it in here, and start working out why it would actually give you this expression. But I'll just give you a really simple example, and then we'll end the lecture. Okay, this is a review of calculus. This is not you know, a whole course on calculus. So I'm just reminding you of things that you already know. This chain rule is super important. Uh, so let's say, uh, let us say that you know, f of x equals, okay, what do I want to do here? I want to make f of x equal to sine of x, because I like the sine function. And let's say g of x uh, equals x cubed, okay? So this will make it a lot more, uh, make a lot more sense, because this is just a bunch of math gobbledygook if you're not familiar with what it means. But this will make a lot more sense when I actually write this out. f of g of x, f of g of x, literally means I take g of x and I plug it in wherever I see an x in my f of x expression. So I take this and I plug it in here. So f of g of x is literally just sine of x cubed. It's, you know, sine of g of x, sine of x cubed. So this is just another function of x. It's a hairier function than either of these because it's kind of a composition. So you can get bigger, badder functions by doing f of g for two simple functions. And the derivative of this is really, really easy to compute. So uh, the derivative uh, ddx of f of g of x is just equal to, again, the derivative of f with respect. So the derivative of sine is cosine. So it's cosine evaluated at g of x, meaning evaluated at x cubed, 
So derivative of f is just cosine, and it's f prime of g of x of x cubed, so cosine of x cubed, times the derivative of g of x of x cubed is 3x squared. So that's 3x squared. So this is the derivative. I, I probably shouldn't have skipped a skip. I, I probably should have written cos x cubed times 3x squared and then move my 3 out. Okay, I just did it. Um, but this is how you compute the derivative. Really, really simple. So I can compute the derivative of really nasty functions like sine of x cubed. I say, well, okay, sine of x cubed is just f being sine and x cubed being g. And then I use the chain rule for derivative of f of g of x. And I get a really simple expression out. Okay, so this is just a quick review of the derivative. It's the rate of change of a function with respect to its independent variable. So it could be some function f of x. How much does f change as I vary x? Uh, you can have this simple geometric picture in words or in math. And you can use that first principle basic idea to uh, kind of get these really powerful rules out that allow you to take the derivative of almost any function. Um, anything else I want to tell you? That's pretty much it. Um, you know, in the future, we're going to be approximating these things. You know, now not taking the limit as delta x goes to zero, and there will be some error. But that's how we do it on a computer because your computer doesn't know how to take the limit as delta x goes to zero um, without you telling it how to. Okay. Uh, thanks for listening, and we're gonna. You know, hopefully this will help you build up now into things like differential equations. Okay. Thanks.